This is Mari Robson of Love Lulu Creative, a podcast that supports and celebrates artists and creative entrepreneurs while giving back to the community in a unique and meaningful way. This is episode number 13, lucky number 13, and I am thrilled to share with you the most lovely, bright light, Miss Bridget Thornton of Paint and Petals. Today on the episode, we get all kinds of wonderful information from her about what it's like to make a living as a commercial artist. Bridget is um, super successful at doing it, and she was really kind to share all her resources. In fact, you'll see a lot of them listed in the show notes below, but definitely take a listen to how she went about getting her beautiful floral artwork into stores, you know, little stores like Anthropology, and, <laughs> you know, every every artist's dream. And also, she's also been featured uh, on the Serena and Lily website. Her gorgeous artwork has been featured there. And now she's even started her own wholesale line. So get ready. This is one to watch. She is really a powerhouse. And it was really super fun to interview her. She's a West Coast gal. She lives up in Berkeley. I love the city of Berkeley. And um, this is a really informational, helpful interview. If you're thinking of doing a commercial design, this is your episode. She really shares how you get it done. So stay tuned for a super fun interview with the very beautiful Bridget Thornton of Paint and Petals. Hi, Bridget. It is so nice to have you on the show. I am so excited to get to chat with you today because I have all kinds of questions for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Mari. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you today. Can't wait to get started on this wonderful conversation. Yeah. So uh, we're both artists and we're both West Coast artists. I love that you live in Berkeley. It's one of my absolute favorite cities. My um, brother lives there. My daughter goes to Cal. So I love Berkeley. Um, did you always, is that where you grew up or where, where are you from? So I actually grew up in a small town called Moraga, which is just oh, the yeah. Caught Tunnel. It's um, a great little community, but I love its proximity to both Berkeley and San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So I definitely was raised in a sort of suburban life, but had access to bigger cities all around. So that was great. And then my parents went to Cal, my brother went to Cal. Yeah. And <laughs> and my grandpa's actually the swim coach of the men's cow swim team. So he's, wow. <laughs> he's not anymore because he retired, but he did that for, I think, 40 years or some, some long amount of time. So definitely have strong ties to the Berkeley community. And then just to backtrack a little bit, um, I w lived in LA for a about two years and then just recently I moved back about a year ago and my art studios in Berkeley in like the Gilman district. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I want, I want to ask you about LA, but <laughs> let's, we're, we're going to go back. We got to go back to when you were a little bit younger and just, okay. um, I wanted to know kind of your evolution, your journey as an artist. Was it something when you were in high school that you're like, this is it. Like, I really want to make a go of this or was it something that evolved later for you? So it was actually a little bit earlier than high school. I'm about to get real here, but in junior high in eighth grade, I just faced some really sort of, not too dark of times, but just some harder times. Uh, my parents were going through a little bit of a rocking point, rocky point in their relationship. And I was just feeling really stressed out with academic pressure and pressure in sports and extracurriculars. And that's when I really found art as sort of therapy. And so I just really cherished my art class that I had in junior high. And I would go into the art room at lunch and basically I started painting in all of my free time. And so I just really carried that passion with me through high school as well. And I always just stocked my schedule with the art classes, the photography classes, and then I even did a pre-college course at California College of the Arts during my summers in high school. So that was a great glimpse into what art looks like in an academic setting and in a collegiate setting. And then I love that program so much. I actually attended California College of the Arts for college as well. I'm so, so jealous because yeah. I wanted to go there really oh, bad. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's still yeah. time. 
you can go still time. Well, I ended up, I remember how I had a little bit of an argument with my father about, I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to go to art school. And he's like, you're going to get a technical degree. So I ended up at, at California Polytechnic getting an art degree. <laughs> so, well, it worked out. But yeah. I, that's a great college and what a, what a great resource to be able to go there prior to even entering it and do like a, was it like an AP course or? or exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you receive AP credits for each course that you take there. And I think you can take up to two classes during the summer. And just very thankful that my parents were supportive of me going to art school because that is also something I kind of struggled with a little bit as well because I wanted to have that college experience, but I also really wanted to follow my passion. And when I looked into going to a state school or a UC, I just really realized that you couldn't take art classes until about your junior year because those departments are impacted and don't have as much funding as the other subjects. And so that was just really sad to me that I would have to wait two full school years in order to take my first art class. So I just knew that California College of the Arts would be a great fit. So not all schools like that, because like Cal Poly wasn't like that. But oh. um, it's one of Cal Poly is one of the few schools that will um, you declare your major when you go in. So um, you start right away doing the one hundred one series, doing art, but you are still doing math and oh, yeah. all the all the unfun things that artists don't really like. <laughs> well, some artists. Yeah, at California College of the Arts, it's a bachelor's degree, so you do take math, history, science. All yeah, that. yeah. Um, but yeah, I know Cal Poly has a really great art education program. I actually looked at the graphic design department mm -hmm, there, mm -hmm. and then the two schools where the programs were more impacted, I think they were Sonoma State and Chico State, and things could have changed now. That was back in... 2010 so some time has definitely passed but you're also correct because there's a lot of um of the colleges that will wait until you have your your you know your general education debt and they will not even start like if you're getting a bfa or something so there's a lot of different routes there for for looking going through college um and to to be an artist it's i think it just depends on what type of artist you want to be yeah, so sure. what type of artist did you want to be when you went to college were you pursuing graphic design yeah, so similar to you, I did feel like I wanted to have a practical degree in order to be employed after college. So I studied graphic design to until the middle of my junior year. And then on the side of doing all those graphic design courses, I was just painting as much as I could. And I first got my feet wet with showing art publicly at Rick and Ann's in Berkeley. And so I just asked the manager if I could hang up my artwork in their, in their restaurant and they thankfully said yes. And that experience just was so exciting and so fun and joyful for me. And so I knew right then that I had to change my major to painting and drawing. And so middle of my junior year, I changed my major and that was a big choice as well because it, I did have to go an extra semester of college and private art school is can be expensive. Quite expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. No way of sugarcoating that. So um, that was a big decision, but I'm so happy I made that choice because painting and drawing was really my true love. And so just following that passion and not wavering on doing something that didn't align as much with who I was, was definitely the right choice. So I find this super interesting because I, I was really kind of gravitated to your art on Instagram because it had a graphic vibe to it like the, and you paint a lot of florals and stuff and your florals um are not like the grandmother florals like they're really vibrant and colorful but then you sometimes will do like the line drawing and it's it has a it has a graphic back um it, vibe to it you know yeah. so that makes sense to me now that you said that you've studied the graphic design and then taking it further which we'll get into in just a little bit about you um moving into, it looks like you're, you understand surface design and, and product design and all that, but I want to go back to something that you said and this wonderful educational background of, of what you've done, but I really love that you share that story about using art as therapy when you were younger. Mm. I think it's something, it's such a powerful tool to have in your toolbox always, and that you don't even have to be an artist to, um, to tap into that, you know, creative journaling or whatever it is. And that's, that's a really lovely way that you found art. 
I love that. Yeah. And I think right now there's this great resurgence of people returning to crafts just as creative outlets. Like a lot of my Mm -hmm. friends work full time and then they have memberships at ceramic studios and they weren't necessarily artistic growing up, but they found this new love in just making for the sake of making. So that's something that's really exciting to me as well. I mean, not everyone needs to attach a profit to creating things. You can use it just to make yourself happy and for general wellness. Right, right. I love that. (laughs) Okay, so did you move to LA right after you graduated or was, uh, what was the next step after you graduated? Where did you go? So uh, kind of a winding road to get to LA um, because I did want to be employable after college and you can do that with art right out of the gate, but I um, align myself with the fashion industry. And so in college, I interned at a great clothing company called Tarte Collections and they're mm-hmm. local to the Bay Area and they sell clothing to Nordstrom and Stitch Fix. And um, I just love their brand. And so I was a digital marketing intern at their company. And that role really shaped my view of incorporating art and business. So while I was there, I was working or I was assisting the graphic designers in editing photos for their website. I got to work on photo shoots. I did a photo shoot for their swim line in Lake Tahoe. And then my favorite thing I was able to do while I was at Tarte Collections was work with their print designer. And so she would just be extremely helpful in that she would have me do homework assignments. So she would tell me to go home after work and create some watercolor paintings. And I would obviously make as many things as I could for them. And I would bring them (laughs) to the office the next day. And not all of them would be great. They usually, um, like maybe one painting out of 10 paintings, which is good because you're learning about editing and learning about what looks good on a textile. Mm -hmm. Uh, because not all paintings translate well into textiles. Exactly. Right. That was such a fun experience. And so at the end of my internship, they were actually able to put one of my paintings on a sleep set. So it was a little nightgown and bathrobe. And so that was really my first glimpse into how exciting and fulfilling it is to create a painting and then see it on a garment worn by a model online. Or <laughs> So I just really fell in love with that process. And yeah. I always loved fashion. So I just love the way that art and sort of the retail space can intertwine. So fun. That's a great story. And what a, what a great mentor that you have that oh, she God. would like, that's fun homework. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure, I'll go home and paint. I would do that anyway. <laughs> exactly. So very, she was awesome. So you worked for them for a little while and then what did you do? Oh, okay. And then I, so then I was having trouble getting a job in fashion Uh, right out of the gate that wasn't an internship. So I went to Orange County and interned as a product development intern for a company called Honolulu Surf Company, and they're owned by Billabong. So I was actually able to work in the Billabong offices, which are in Irvine. And that that internship didn't last too long, but it definitely got me down to Southern California, where I was connected to BCBG Max Azria. And I worked with BCBG. Um, That was sort of my first full-time job out of college. And I was on their advertising team and that was located in LA. And we were able to work on all of the e-com photo shoots for their website and also the editorial photo shoots. And then I was able to go to New York Fashion Week with them. And so at that time, I was really busy with working with them, but I still managed to just try to paint as much as I could on the side. So didn't have a lot of free time during those years. And it was at that time that I got connected to Serena and Lily, which is another Bay Area brand. And I started just supplying them with a couple of pieces of art each month. And that that work slowly started to build until I was able to leave my full-time job with BCBG and pursue art full-time. So then you moved back up to the Bay Area at that point? Yeah, so I stayed in LA for a little, I think maybe for about six more months doing art full-time, and then I decided to move back to the Bay Area just because I grew up here and I, my network of friends and family are so supportive here, so it's made it a really great transition into being a full-time artist just because I have a great community of people around me here to support. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, and who wouldn't want to live there? It's, it's yeah, beautiful. Okay, so you t- just um, dropped it. The first thing that I really want to talk about is Serena and Lily. And I remember meeting them um, when they were getting started. And I, we were at a trade show. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> These guys are going to be big. I just knew. I knew what they were doing. It was so above um, what anybody else had even thought of. It had a very designer feeling to it. And, um, and then look at them now. <laughs> so I like how they started to introduce having original artists and, and featuring different artists. So how did that go about? Like, did you just call them up and say, Hey, I've got some art for you. Did they come to you? Did you have an agent? Like, how did that work? So you're going to laugh, but I was just so set on becoming a full-time artist that I would email them all the time. So I think I emailed them a total of six times before I got a response. And I would just send them new updated images of my artwork and be just super nice in the emails and just say, hi, I'm, I'm an artist. I grew up in the Bay Area. I love your brand and I love how it's somewhat local to where I grew up. And yeah, I was just relentless in getting in touch with them because they're one of the few companies that sells original artwork alongside of amazing furniture. And they are expanding into being a pretty large brand and they've kept that original art component on their website, which I just really, really like. And I think their customers enjoy that as well. Um, well I think it's really smart because art, as an interior designer, you know, art goes with these these uh, spaces that you're trying to create. So you have their beautiful furniture and then you have all these options of artwork that works with it. And you're supporting actually like a real artist that's not some mass produced piece somewhere. Um, out of this country. <laughs> and the presence that an original piece of artwork has in your home is so much stronger than a print. I mean, I sell prints and I love them and I love how it makes art more accessible for a wider audience. But I think if you can get an original piece, it definitely tells more of a story. So true. <laughs> so true. Okay. And I also really love, because this is all about sharing advice that you just, your tenacity and that you just didn't give up. And you're like, I have this and I have this. And how about this one? <laughs> it's like, and finally, you know, if you knock hard enough, the door opens. So, wow, that's, that's, that's really great. That's a great story. And I wish you continued success with Serena and Lily because they are great people. Yeah. I feel like if you have a vision of what you want to do and you feel really in alignment with something, it doesn't hurt to just keep reaching out to them because yeah, you just never know when the potential door might open for you. So vision, are you uh, a visual manifester? (laughs) Okay. I I love (laughs) everything about manifesting and the law of attraction. And I just think, Definitely for any artist. I mean, it's a visual medium. So you're already implementing visualization Mm -hmm. into your practice. And so why not do that with your career? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's what we do. We're just visual. And and when you're independent and you're working by yourself, it's like you're your boss. So what are you, what is the next step? I mean, it's all coming from your thoughts and what, what's the next thing you want to create. So manifest, create, whatever, same thing. (laughs) <laughs> and I think we touched upon it a little bit earlier, but there's just so many different paths you can take within the art world. Mm-hmm. So really having um, a loosely mapped out guide or an end goal in mind, I think is really helpful because it can feel overwhelming in terms of being able to just sift through the different avenues you can take. Like you can do image licensing, you can do the gallery route, you can do selling direct to consumers through your website or Instagram, you can do just really anything. So Mm -hmm. it is great to have a end goal in mind. Well, and if you think about it, like everything is art, right? So every shirt, every, um, you know, wallpaper, and and you're going to see art is on every single product. So um, it's just that, you know, most people just go through life and they don't really realize that. But, you know, then there's the people like you who are like creating the art uh, for for the sake of art, but then also creating art in a, a way to understand the scale and the repeat and the surface design of how it would fit on an apron or it would fit on a, a dish or something like that. So there, there, but the surface design is, is different. So it's like being a fine artist and going that route, that's, that's one avenue, but to like, you, you kind of tapped on it a little bit earlier about how you did all of these paintings and maybe only one worked because the scale wasn't maybe right. Or the, the colors weren't trending at the time and, you know, putting it on a product, you have to understand 
a kind of a different aspect of what is what art is you know you have to create it differently for the product exactly i totally agree with that and i've always come through or i've just love how the art world is able to really just i don't know <laughs> sorry i got got to mix up all my words you can edit that out <laughs> <laughs> well, but, um, not at all. This is <laughs> this is a real talk, girl. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So basically, I for me in art school, my art was like very, very happy, and a lot of the other art was very, very conceptual, which I love and respect. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't totally feel like I fit in, and even my art school and my artwork has always been more commercial and just very approachable and joyful and happy and colorful. And so I really like how I've been able to sort of carve out a section of the art world that is more approachable and commercial. And then that ties in really well with sellable products. So it is just a matter of finding your, your space. Finding your lane and then, and then what's working for you to, to create. Uh -huh. And you know, I, I know a lot of artists and I think every single one has said that I didn't feel like I fit in. <laughs> I, I, yeah. It's like, who fit, who determines who fits in? It's just art, <laughs> like, yeah. but yeah, I, I totally get it. You know, I look at like all these like really amazing fine artists and I, I just am so blown away by their talent and their technique and the hours that they dedicate to their crafts. And I just think, oh, what am I doing? This is some silly little watercolor, <laughs> you know, but, but for me, that's what feeds my soul. And that's kind of where my paintbrush wants to go. And, and if that's, you know, where you took it and you took those beautiful florals and you were able to put it on a product and um, that brings a lot of joy to people. It's just, it's a totally different way of using your art um, to just create. It's a different way of creating than it is to sit down and, and do a oil painting that takes six months to create. Exactly. And I totally agree with you. I have the feeling that all art is equally important. Absolutely. And yeah, it just everyone's different style is has e of equal value. So, totally. absolutely, we need it all. Even if even if you feel like you're amateur, I think everybody should be just creating because you're tapping into that part of your soul that is just fantastic. So, we agree on that. So, okay, are you ready? Let's talk about anthropology because okay. holy moly! Wow, congratulations! This is this is kind of a big deal. Like yeah. you're a big deal. Oh. And you're really young and you're, like, you're doing this amazing work with the anthropology and it's just gorgeous. It's so pretty. So how did that come about? Oh my gosh, you're going to love this story if you're into manifesting. Okay, that's it. I love it. <laughs> so in, um, as soon as I could start fitting into anthropology clothing, which I think was in like maybe beginning of high school, maybe towards the end of junior high, my mom and I just fell in love with the anthropology store. So this was quite a while ago when they didn't have as many retail locations and the store and the brand were a little bit more or a little less known. And so we would go to the anthropology on 4th Street and just we fell in love with the different um, window displays and the different artistic clothing and elements in their stores. And so in eighth grade, I just loved anthropology and I would envision my artwork in their stores. And then later on in high school, I started seeing them sell more artwork in their stores. And so the first piece of art that I really loved in their store was by an artist named Luli Wallace, mm -hmm. who also does floral paintings. Mm -hmm. She's, she's and, amazing. Yeah, she's so good. And that is definitely someone's career that I look up to and try to model and add, implement different aspects of her career into my mm -hmm. own. Um, so I saw her artwork in there and I just thought, wow, I would love to have that. Um, or I would love to have a career similar to that. And I would love to just be involved with something in line with anthropology at some point in my life. So I just always kept that in the back of my mind and I would visualize my artwork in their stores. And then after I left BCBG, it was um, a few months afterwards and they reached out to me through email and asked if I wanted to do a home collection with them. And I was- How course, did they find you? Um, so I think they actually found me through Serena and Lily's website because uh, I worked okay. with a couple of other artists through that website. Mm -hmm but I'm not entirely sure and I've asked them and I think that might be something that they want to keep a little bit private, but that's my hunch. So, mm -hmm. um, and so I was obviously thrilled, freaked out, 
cried when they emailed me. It was the most exciting thing ever. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Like, la, 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 going through my emails. Like, oh, here's one from anthropology. We want to do yeah. a question with you. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. And then the way that project worked is it's an image licensing contract and so they asked for some pieces and then there were some paintings that they liked but they wanted in different color palettes and so I would custom create artwork for them as well and then also just to really utilize being on their radar I would send them more pieces than they asked for so say they would ask for two pieces I would send them five different different pieces that they could potentially use and that was actually um, game changing because they did pick up more pieces than they had originally asked for. So, just mm -hmm. a little word of advice. Oh, that is good so advice. Beyond the ask. I think that's great advice. And there was something else that you just said. Um, you follow, you know, following an, another artist that has a kind of a similar trajectory that you want to that you want and right. kind of see what they're doing. And, and nowadays it's so easy. You can just actually reach out to them and just be like, Hey, how did you do this? <laughs> I, Every artist I've talked to is so generous and kind and like, oh, well, I did it like this. Because really, there's, there's not a competition. There's a look for everything at, at, a, at the right time. So, you know, just because you may have the contact for this person doesn't mean that you're going to get that job with that person. You have to have the look for it. And so, I don't know, I'm all about sharing the info. So I totally agree. I've had people message me on Instagram who I've never met before and they have art on their Instagram and they're like, can you hop on a call with me and offer me any advice? And even if I've never heard of them, I'm always like, yeah, sure. Let's hop on a call later today and just chatting with them. And I mean, I can't give them all the answers because our, we're different people and our careers are different, but if I can help out and give any words of wisdom, I am all for that. And yeah, just if you put that out, then you're going to reciprocate that from other artists as well, which I think is really exciting. Yeah, that's so great. I love that. So when you were creating the artwork, I'm um, just like details now, like when you were creating the work for Anthea, did you just hand over these paintings and then they did the cut, edit, put it on the dishes? Or did you, did they say, okay, can you come back and we want um, a floral that could actually work on a plate. So could you curve it? So it curves like this. And are you handing over like the pattern repeat Photoshop files or are you letting them handle all of that? So, uh, so it starts out with just giving them images of artwork and then they usually have specifications that they'll let you know about. So for example, we did a six foot shower curtain. And so just the initial image obviously wasn't to scale and wasn't correct for doing a piece that size. So then the artist does get to be involved in the designing process, which I loved. And so I would help them configure and rearrange the art pieces to fit the products that they liked. And then one thing I really like it about working with them is they allow the artists to have input on the samples. So as they're receiving samples in, you're able to approve or adjust. And for example, there was a pillow that was really cute, but I just felt like my artwork didn't look quite right on it. So we were able to tweak it and rearrange the pattern on it. And so I was giving them Photoshop files. So that's another tool I really highly recommend artists be able to know how to use just so you are able to be more of an asset to these companies. Okay, so I think that's critical because I do some I do some licensing as well, and um, having that graphic design understanding of how uh, how how to know how to use Photoshop and create a repeat or Illustrator, whichever you choose to do it in. Uh, so great tool is to if you want to be a commercial artist, then you get to know those programs really well because they're going to be your best friend. And you can learn those on YouTube. I mean, I, I've been using those programs for since they came out. <laughs> and I still have to like go back and go, now, how do you do this one thing? Sometimes it's like it's so easy to figure it out. I know. And they seem intimidating at first, but once you just spend some time on there and learn the language of how they work, anybody can do it. So right, right. don't let it intimidate you. And now looking back on my sort of college career, I'm so happy that I did those graphic design classes because it has definitely come full circle. And like you were saying, just if you're in the commercial art world, it is an asset to know those things because you can quickly adjust something for a client. You can literally design your own products yourself and not have to outsource that to a graphic designer. So it comes as a huge saving too. It's, it's the greatest thing. And you can design your own website. <laughs> oh, I'm 100%. <laughs> 
Wow, gosh, that's all really wonderful information. I really appreciate you sharing all that. So um, is that going to be continue, you're planning on continuing with, with both of those companies, Serena Lilly and Anthro in the future? Are you looking at expanding out? Or are you, um, what's, what's the next couple of years look like for you? Yes. What are you, what's on your vision board today, girl? <laughs> oh man, a lot. But so Serena and Lily is great because I'm able to submit artwork to them each month. And so that's kind of um, just an ongoing project collaboration, which I love. And that also keeps me in my studio making new work because sometimes with the more commercial projects, it can be easy to get away from the painting and just spend a lot of time on the computer. So definitely keep going with Serena and Lily. And then the anthropology collaboration was a summer collection, but there's still, I think, four pieces on their website. And um, I actually just had a new art print come out on anthropology.com. It's called Be Mine. And it's a purple lavender floral print which is really fun and that's actually manufactured by a company called artfully walls so oh, yeah. artfully walls supplies most of the artwork to anthropology's home division so that's another great website for artists to know about because you can literally submit your work through artfullywalls.com and then they have connections at really great retail locations so great way to get your foot in the door into licensing and working with retail locations if you haven't done it before. And next on my radar, well, we just came out with a wholesale collection. And when I say, I am referring to, so my brand is called Paint and Petals. Paint because it's all hand painted and petals because a lot of the work is floral paintings. And um, we did our first trade show for wholesaling at a small local market called Indie Market. And that was amazing. So we got into some local retailers with stationery, notepads, wrapping paper, gift tags, and art prints. And so really in the next few months, I'm just looking to grow that. It's been really great because I have kind of found this new little niche with grocery stores. And so those products are available at Diablo Foods Market in Lafayette and a market called Market 515 in Sacramento. And I just think having these more artsy products in the grocery store division is really exciting. I mean, people are already going to the grocery store for buying food. And so if you can give them a more creative, artful experience while they're there, I think that's a really fun concept that I'd like to expand more into. Well, I hope you pitch Trader Joe's because <laughs> oh they <God>. also. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, or like Whole Foods, I think would be really, really fun because they have some great cards made by artists mm-hmm. already. So exactly, yeah. yeah my friend who I uh, interviewed, uh, I interviewed her about her book, Christine Mason Miller. But mm-hmm. she had a major greeting card line for many years, and I, <laughs> I was like, and um, she sold it, which was even more great for her. Oh, but I remember wow. going in Trader Joe's, going, "Hey, this is Christine's card." <laughs> it was just, I mean, just kind of shocking. It's like. <laughs> But yeah, cards are great because they showcase the artwork, but they're also usable and then people pass them on to friends. So they're almost like a marketing component for yourself if you have mm-hmm. your mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I've been learning about cards. <laughs> yes, you're right. So okay, where are you getting all this stuff printed? Are you printing overseas? Are you printing in the Bay Area? Are you doing it online? So I'm printing in the Bay Area and I'm going to let you know where I'm printing because I love them. And another artist told me about them. They're called Stationery HQ. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're based. So some people do know about them already, but if any artists listening don't, I would highly recommend just reaching out and they make the process very easy and yeah, their pricing is great and their quality is great. I've used them online, but I didn't know they were located in the Bay Area. Yeah, oh, they're in life. San Jose. So it's oh. a little bit of a trip for some people. Yeah. But. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, um, I love the idea they too. do your wall they do your um, wrapping paper too? Yeah, they have great they have a pretty big assortment of products. Really? That's super fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh well, you know what? You're a young soul doing some amazing things for uh, being as young as you are. So it's kind of weird, but I, I I want to ask you what you would give <laughs> advice you would give to somebody younger, although you're still quite young, but I would like to know what your advice would be for someone who is, um, maybe they're actually in college and they're trying to figure out if they want to go into fine art or commercial art or, you know, what would be your advice, business advice for them? My advice for them would be to go and 
take a yoga class or a meditation class. And then after that class, think about what brings you the most joy and really just stick with that because if you're happy and joyful about what you're doing, it will be very easy to keep at it because the life of being an artist or an entrepreneur can get tough at times and it can be discouraging. So if you're experiencing joy from just creating, um, definitely keep your career in line with that. And then if you're having and experiencing joy from what you're making, you'll be able to attract great opportunities into your life. So mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I just I have to correct myself because I just said you were a young soul, but you are a very old soul. <laughs> You're an old soul, and a young body. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, wow, that's really great advice for anybody. Mm-hmm. Go take a yoga class and then find your joy. Yes, yes. I think I'm going to do that later today. <laughs> also, a great book that's kind of that kind of kickstarted my journey into manifesting and law of attraction is called "You Are a Badass at Making Money," and that book is really just great for just honoring your worth and helping you figure out what is in most alignment with what you want out of life. And so definitely recommend that to anyone starting out on this creative path. So good. And all I'm going to put all of these links will be in the show notes as well. Oh, but yeah. I know I've been name dropping all these different things. Yeah, and that's really helpful. This is great for people who are listening to this. I just think it's great stuff. It's so nice of you to share it so openly. Yeah. Um, what was the best advice ever given to you? Best advice ever given to me? Um, well, growing up, my mom would always say, well, she actually would always tell me two different things. So whenever we'd be shopping, she'd always say, you could make that, you could make that. So if I'd see something cool, she'd be like, oh, you could make that. (laughs) I think it was her way of making me not buy every cool thing that I saw, but (laughs) It really helped me feel empowered in the fact that, yeah, I can figure out how to make that. And then she would also say, why not you? And so um, I really just... I love that. that piece of advice. Yep. So whenever I think of a crazy goal or (laughs) I'm always telling her about all my new ideas and she would be like, yep, why not you? And so those are words of wisdom that I think are really great. I want your mom. (laughs) Well, she's a yoga teacher, so maybe I can. Oh, come there you go. <laughs> <laughs> and when I come up, is she in Berkeley? Um, in the East Bay, so more Moraga, Lafayette area. Um, okay. Yeah. I'll have to travel when I trek up there. I'll go take her yoga class. Yes, that'd be great. Oh, wow. Well, this was so fun. And I'm so happy that you're the featured artist for March because spring flowers. I mean, I couldn't think of a person more perfect. So um, you're just a bright light and it's just really been a pleasure to, to get to have this chat with you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mari. It's been so fun to connect with you and to follow your artwork on Instagram as well. And I hope we can just stay connected and help each other out along this journey. Absolutely. You are part of the tribe now. (laughs) All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this podcast and you'd like to support it even more, you can join me over on patreon.com slash Mari Robeson and become a patron of mine. If you're a patron of mine, you'll receive bonus episodes every month only for patrons. You'll also receive 20% off all the merchandise in my online shop, mariropeson.bigcartel. And you will be receiving free printables every month that will be of my artwork and they're some really fun things. You can follow along on Instagram and you can see what I'm creating just for my patrons. I would deeply appreciate it. It would help me keep the lights on and it would help me pay all the fees that it takes to put together a podcast like this so that I can keep supporting all the artists, keep bringing you great information, keep paying it forward to the next generation of artists. It's just a wonderful thing and I would really deeply appreciate your support.